The following instructions should show you how to use EES in solving sets of engineering equations. When you first boot up the program, you'll be greeted with a splash screen. You'll have to hit OK to get rid of it. It then goes into its equations window. It'll have a bunch of junk here. You'll have to get rid of it by saying you want a new file. File, new. Now you have a blank equations window to type your equations into. There are several windows that you can view. Three of them are now active. The equations window is where you'll type your equations. Once you get some equations typed in, he'll format them nicely for you if you like. And also there's a diagram window. If you go to the diagram window, there are some drawing tools by clicking on the diagram window. Uh, more than likely I would recommend that you draw your pictures in some other application like Corel Draw or AutoCAD or something like that. So I'm going to go over to Corel Draw where I have drawn a picture of two plates connected with some bolts and I'm going to cut and paste. I'll cut it by saying, or copy it by saying Control C, and then I'll go back to the EES application, click on the diagram window to make sure it's active, and Control V, and thereby paste that picture inside of the diagram window. I can get rid of the drawing tools here by clicking on the X. You'll notice that the problem I wish to solve is two plates bolted together. The width of each plate is W. Both have a thickness T. Load P is applied to the plates. It's a total of nine bolts holding the plates together with three holes drilled across the plate. The size of the bolt, we'll call it diameter of the bolt and the size of the hole drilled in the plate will be larger than the diameter of the bolt. We'll call it diameter of the hole. Now going back to the equations window, I go to Windows and I go to Equations and I'm going to start typing in the equations which control stress in two plates bolted together. The really nice thing about EES is you just type in the equations just like you would write them on a blackboard. For instance, I can tell you that the area of two plates bolted together with a bunch of holes drilled in it would be equal to the width of the plate multiplied times the thickness of the plate minus the diameter of each hole multiplied times the thickness of the plate, multiplied times the number of holes across HCROSS -S, across the plate. And that's the correct equation for how much area is left after you drill some holes in a plate. I would then tell the equation the program that stress in a plate bolted together is equal to the area, let's see, is equal to the load divided by the area. And then I could tell him generic information for my particular case. For instance, the width of the plate might equal to 8 inches. The thickness of the plate might equal to one inch. The diameter, well let's tell him that the diameter of the hole is equal to the diameter of the bolt plus one eighth. That's normally the case. The diameter of the bolt is equal to plus an eighth is equal to the diameter of the hole drilled in the plate. The hole in the plate has to be bigger than the bolt. Then I'd tell him that the diameter of the bolt to be used in this place is a half an inch. 
Uh, okay, now he comes up and says he's like to auto save every now and then in case I lose my work. That never happens. Disable auto save. So now I'm going to tell him that uh, the load is equal to 10,000 pounds or 10 kips. And let's see if he can solve it. You go up to calculate and you say solve. He says, sorry about that. There's seven equations and nine variables. So obviously I haven't told him enough information. Do I need debug information? No, nah, I can figure it out. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to tell him the number of holes across the plate. Number of holes across, in our case, was three. Um, but I don't see, maybe he's, maybe he can solve that. I don't see that, it looks like I've given him everything. So we'll again try calculate, solve the problem. You could also just hit the F2 key. He says, you're still an idiot. There's eight equations and nine variables. Show debug, well, okay, give me a hint. Yes. Oh, looky here. Here I call the area A, and here I call the area area. Okay, so those hints are kind of nice. Close the debug. Go up here and change this to area. So two different names, and that's two different variables. As a matter of fact, let's just check something. Let's spell it little a r e a and see if he cares about the case of the letters. Calculate, solve. No, he doesn't care. He calls it area, whether it's a big A or a little a. So he's calculated the area, diameter of the bolt, diameter of the hole, how many holes, and here's the stress, 1.6 KSI stress in the plate. Now he thinks I'm working in kilojoules, centigrade, kilopascals, and that kind of stuff. I don't care. As long as the units are consistent, I don't care. Let me close the solution window. You could, however, change that under Options, Preferences, um, general equations must not be in here. Printer, plots, complex directories, okay. Must be somewhere else. Options, here we go. Options, unit system. So you go check on unit system. He's working in the SI system. Change to English. Won't change anything. When I say okay, then again I solve. Uh, calculate, solve, now it comes out in uh, KSI. He thinks it's PSI in pounds mass, but you know, I know that that 10 is kips, so I know that's 1.6 KSI. All right, so what's the big deal? Why is this any better than a spreadsheet? Uh, I guess it's not really. You can calculate the area in a cell in a spreadsheet and have the area refer to certain cells where the diameter of the hole and the width of the plate and the thickness of the plate are all located, and you can come out with the stress just as easily. However, let's say that your boss comes in and says, no, no, it's not an 8-inch wide plate and a 1-inch thick plate, because you already told me that for an 8-inch wide plate and a 1-inch thick plate, the answer came out 1.6 KSI, and that means that I have got too much steel there. I could use a thinner plate. How thin can the plate go and still not get over 30 KSI? Well, that's real easy to do. I simply come in and add the fact that the boss wants the stress to equal to 30 KSI. And as you might imagine, I'm going to have to take this off. This T is equal to 1 because you can't have a 1 inch thick plate and 30 KSI. But I'm going to leave it here for right now just to show you what happens when he tries to calculate, solve. And he says this equation resets the value of a previously defined variable. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. That's okay with me. Okay. Well, the old EES, when I would do that, in effect tell him too much information, he'd come back and say, you're an idiot, 
but this time instead of not telling me enough information you told me too much evidently this new version that just came out says that when you try and calculate something when you've told him too many things he says the equation resets the value of a previously defined variable in effect he's telling you that you told him what the area should be in this equation and you also in effect are telling him what the area ought to be in this equation and it's resetting something that you said down in here basically speaking this equation says you've told me too much so when I come in here and take t is equal to 1 out let me just put quotes around it that'll just make it a comment that'll get rid of it and I can always go back and get it now calculate solve ah lo and behold you'll notice that now then the stress came out 30 right on the money and now then I find out that I need a 0.05 inch thick plate to get that stress so I can go to the boss and say look you don't have to buy a half inch thick plate anymore if the situation is as you described with three bolts across the plate and using half inch diameter bolts where the size of the hole drilled in the plate is an eighth of an inch bigger than the bolt size and 10 kips are applied you only need a 0 0.05442 uh, plate probably going to end up buying a 0 0.0625 is the nearest size that perhaps that we can purchase now closing the solution window let's add some more information for example the shear stress in the bolts is equal to the load divided by the area of the bolts as opposed to the area of the plate and let's calculate the area of the bolts is equal to pi don't know for sure if that's pi maybe with these little two parentheses things or not I'll have to look that up area of the bolts equal to pi times the diameter of the bolt what do we use for the D of bolt D B O L T tie the bolt raised to the two power and then that'll have to be multiplied times uh, the number of holds across times the number of rows of bolts. Well, fooey on that, let's just admit it. There's nine bolts in there. Now, I'm a little worried about that D bolt squared times nine. I'm not real sure how that works. I'm pretty sure that would work like it was, but I'm taking that chance. So I'll put some parentheses to make sure the equation behaves as I wish. And if that pi isn't right, then uh, it's not going to work. Calculate solve. Okay, there's a syntax error. All right, well, let's see how you get a pi. There's a help screen. You can go to the help index. Uh, the help index says functions and procedures. Here's mathematical functions, probably somewhere in there. Uh, looky here. Here's a pi. And it says pi is a reserved variable. Okay, so those little parentheses you need those parentheses for uh, Excel, but you don't need them for EES. So I'm going to close the window. Then I'm going to come back here and take those two little parentheses off, and he'll evidently know what pi is. Then calculate and solve. Lo and behold, the shear stress in the bolts is 1.415 KSI. Now let's close out this solution window and see what else he's got for us. It's often useful to get multiple answers for a whole series of cases. In that case, you can use the table solutions. So I'll say tables. These are parameter tables. So I could say, give me a new parametric table. And he says, all right, here are, the here are the variables that you're using in your equation which variables would you like me to tinker with? Well, I would like you to tinker with the diameter of the bolts. And I don't want you to tinker with the answer, but I'd like you to report the shear stress in the bolts and also the axial stress in 
the plates. I probably ought to go back and rename that stress to axial stress in the plate to make sure we know it from the shear stress in the bolts. But that's the, those are the things I'd like you to put in a table. He says, okay. He says, I will now do several runs for you. You can change any one of these three things. You have indicated you are not interested in changing anything else. The other things will change. The area of the bolt will change and the stress in the plates will change. But you've only asked me for three things, some of which you probably want me to change and others as you want to see the results of that change. I say yes. In fact, you even lucked out. You have them in the right order. I would like for you to give me some diameter of the bolts. I'm going to click on that little down arrow. I could just fill these numbers in. One inch bolt, two inch bolt, three inch bolt, four inch bolt. But I can f fill them out multiply by saying I want how many rows? Uh, well, let's say I want five rows. That'd be one, two, three, four, five rows. And I would like you to set the values. I'd like you to have the first value I'd like the bolt to be a quarter of an inch in diameter and the last value or the increment or the multiplier let's say I want an increment of 0 0.25 inches okay alright now that's good in other words I would like him to solve the problem for me five times where the diameter of the bolt is a quarter inch, half inch, three quarters, one, one and a quarter inches and now then these numbers will be the result of that change. So you're not going to be able to put anything in there. So now let's go back to this main window and say calculate. Now instead of just solving a problem, I'm going to have to solve a table. Now I got a feeling that this diameter of the bolt equals to a half here may get in his way. I don't know. He may he may go ahead and use these instead of this one. We'll see. Solve the table. He says the first run is 1, the last run is 10. No, I think I only have 5 of them. Okay. He says the diameter of the bolt is set to a value in the worksheet. I can't set it in the parametric table too. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me take the diameter of the bolt out of this one by putting parentheses around it. Put some parentheses, uh, quote marks around it. Then we go back to the table. Retrieve the parametric table. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, this this tables, I can't, I don't want a new parametric table. I've already built one. I don't want to retrieve one. That's if you stored it on disk somewhere. It's just a window. These tables are windows just like everything else. Sure enough, see under windows there's the parametric tables. This is the one I'm looking for. Alright, and so now then I say calculate, solve the table, uh, 1 through 5. That's why I put a 10 here because he didn't know what table was going to be used because we had this diameter of the bolt involved. So okay, looky there. Turns out the stress in the plate is, that's wrong. No, it's not wrong, is it? Stress in the plate is 30 KSI each time because we insisted that the stress be 30 KSI each time. I was wondering why the stress stayed the same when the bolt got bigger. Well, the reason is, windows, uh, parametric tables, the reason it's the same is because we insisted it be the same. What happened is he changed the thickness of the plate to make that happen. However, here are the stresses in the bolts. 5, 1, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, and 0.2. The stresses go down as the bolt gets bigger. Ah, pretty nifty. Now then, let's go to a window. Nah, let's go to a plot and open up a new plot window, an XY plot. He says, all right, now you made some changes, and the only things that I recorded, there was a bunch of other stuff going on, but the only things I recorded was the diameter of the bolt, the shear stress that resulted from those bolts, and the stress 
the axial stress of the plate. So what do you want on the x-axis? Well, on the x-axis I like the diameter of the bolt. What do you want on the y-axis? I like the shear stress in the bolts. And let's see what he gives us when you hit OK. Looky there. He gives us a plot of stress, shear stress in the bolts versus diameter of the bolts. All right. Now we'll close this plot window. We'll check what's going on here. Uh, we go check the specifications. We find that for this particular application, the allowed shear stress in the bolts is about 0.35 or about 0.36 KSI. That means that this is the allowed stress. That means I'm going to order these bolts right here. I'm going to order one inch diameter bolts. Uh, there will be two million plates, two million plates times nine bolts per plate. Uh, that's 18 million bolts. 18 million bolts are about a dollar a piece of this grade. So about 18 to 20 million dollars. Uh, the order has now left. Uh, incidentally, I think what I'll do is I'll run a hand solution right quick to make sure these numbers are okay. Uh, the stress in the bolt is P over A is equal to the load P. That's 10,000 pounds divided by the area of a 1 inch diameter square bolt in the table here. 0 0.785 square inches is equal to 12.73. Good Lord. Oh, okay. Divided by nine bolts. Man, I thought we had $18 million down the drain. 12.73 divided by nine. 1.414 KSI. This doesn't say 1.414 KSI. Perhaps I should have done my hand check before I ordered the bolts. Alright, let's see what's wrong here. Let's close that. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Area of the bolts is pi d squared over 4. Well, surely I won't lose my job over a little thing like that. And I'm sure that the supplier is not going to hold us to that previous order. And surely he will accept the million bolts that he already delivered back. Hand solution. Hand solution is required. All right. Now let's go back and recalculate things now that we have fixed this horrible problem. First, we want to calculate solve the table. It's table one. We only have one, so we call it table one. We say OK. And lo and behold, sure enough, uh, the stress has changed significantly. If the allowed stress, which we said before, was 0.36, then none of these bolts are going to do the job. wonder what size bolt it would take to do the job if the allowed shear stress in the bolts really was 0.36 KSI. Well, we would simply come back here and say the allowed shear stress in the bolts, S-H-E-A-R-S-T-R-E-S-S-I-N-B-O-L-T-S, -S -S is equal to 0 0.36. That's pretty low stress. They must be made out of jello. And then you would have to take out the well, the diameter of the bolt is already removed, so it might run just like that. Let's just see. Now, we're not going to calculate a table, though. We'll just be solving this front sheet here. Solve. Lo and behold. The diameter of the bolt necessary would be about a 2-inch diameter bolt. How nifty. Incidentally, along with that, that's a pretty big bolt. It means it takes a pretty big chunk out of the plate. And the resulting uh, size of the hole would be an eighth of an inch bigger. And the thickness of the plate used to be about 0.05 inches, I think. Now it's come up. It has to be thicker because you took a lot of the meat out of it with your two-inch diameter bolts. 
and the thickness now comes up to 0.19 inches.